The Holy Father has unveiled sweeping reform of the book in canon law that covers sanctions related to clergy sexual abuse. Work on the revisions began more than a decade ago. They are considered the biggest change to canon law since the early 1980s. Joining us now is Father James Bradley, Assistant Professor of Canon Law at the Catholic University of America. Father Bradley, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Uh, uh, first off, tell us about the significance of the new laws and why was it necessary to make such sweeping changes to this part of church law? Well, in modern times, there have been two codes of canon law for the Latin Church. The first was in 1917, and the second revised after the Second Vatican Council in 1983. And the 1983 code contains seven books, and book six, as you said, is on the penal law of the Church. So a new version of this book inserted into the code represents a substantial change in the universal law. In fact, this is the first time that an entire book of the code has been replaced. So from an historical point of view, the new book six is very significant indeed. Now, having said that, the content of the new law is also very important, and the revised legislation will, in Pope Francis's own words, provide a more agile, healthy, and corrective instrument in order to prevent greater evils and, most importantly, to help heal the wounds caused by human weakness. And in your opinion, do you think these changes uh, will help the church deal more effectively with a clergy abuse crisis? Yes, I think they will. The revised legislation is broadly about the same subject, what we might call crime and punishment in the church. But I think what's key is the approach that's changed. And it's really quite striking. The law is about crimes, but it isn't really addressed to its perpetrators or to its victims. It's addressed to the church's pastors, to the bishops. And the Pope has recognized that in the past there's been great damage, even scandal caused by a lack of understanding of the true relationship between charity and the application of law. And it seems to me that he wants to correct this, not so much by adopting a less charitable approach, but by rightly reframing penal law in particular as an act of charity, a fruit of good pastoral governance. The law and order in general, and penal law in particular, has a purpose, the good order of society, in this case, the society of the church and the common good, which we would ultimately see as the salvation of souls. So this moves us away from a kind of false dichotomy between mercy and justice, between pastoral care and the application of law, and insists, and Pope Francis really insists quite strongly, that the church's pastors and bishops in particular have a duty to perform in their careful and thorough implementation of the law. And what has been the reaction from church leaders as well as lay people? Well, as I say, one of the key changes in all of this is a, is a change of mindset. No longer can it be said that being relaxed about the implementation of penal law is a kindness or being more pastoral. It squarely puts responsibility for all of this at a local level with the bishops. So I think this whole reframing of the law adds uh, a certain uh, cachet to canon law. It, it, it means that law is no longer seen as an obstacle to pastoral governance, but a necessary and positive instrument of it. And I think that's the way in which this will be seen as, as time progresses, as something which, in a sense, reframes law and gives it a more positive force in the life of the church. And Father, we have about a minute or so left, but, but I'm curious, what comes next and when exactly do these new laws take effect? Well, first of all, they have to come into effect. So they come into effect on the 8th of December, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, and there's going to be questions and clarifications between now and then. But I think the most important thing that comes next is the implementation of the law. These laws are not going to be worth the paper they're written on if they're not taken up and implemented by the church's pastors. So there are a lot of opportunities here for good governance and for helping to heal the wounds of the past, but the work really begins when we start seeing these laws put into practice. All right. Well, thank you so much, Father, for your analysis. We really appreciate it. Father James Bradley, Assistant Professor of Canon Law at the Catholic University of America. Thank you again. Thank you, Tracy.